Okay guys, hopefully this is gonna be a quick one. This is a 1994 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo with a 4.0. Uh, it, it is a no start. First thing I'm gonna start with is a simple spark test. And I'm just going to connect an inline spark tester to my distributor cap. And when I do this, I like to go in series. I've seen a lot of people will choose to put this clip on ground but I prefer to go in series to where the spark normally goes. I think it's a better test. It's a more loaded test for the coil. Can you crank that for me? Okay, cool. As you see, we have real good spark. That jumped that 20,000, uh, it was a 20,000 volt gap that I had that set at. And it's actually even more than that with it set in series. So nothing wrong with the coil. Next step is we're gonna check for fuel. And this is a method I don't necessarily endorse, but I realize not everyone has a fuel pressure gauge and it is a way that we can verify whether or not we have fuel pressure. And now the thing about this, when I take this cap off and depress this straighter, which is what I'm going to do, if fuel comes out of here, that doesn't mean that we have enough pressure. So let's be clear on that. But if I depress this straighter and there's no fuel, then I have a really good direction on where I'm going next. So we already cranked it. There should be rest pressure in the system. We don't need the car running or cranking to do the test. There is nothing in this at all. Again, I, I, I prefer using a fuel pressure gauge, but this is a method that you can identify it. You just need to be aware of what you're doing. Of course, it is fuel and it is a fire hazard, so uh, be aware of that. Uh, my recommendation is a gauge, again, but as you can see, no pressure at all, no residual pressure. Uh, next step, we'll stay under the hood. Let's see if we have injection pulse. Okay, so I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, why are you bothering checking injection pulse? And I agree with you, we have no fuel pressure. Let's go in the back. Well, the reason I wanna check injection pulse is I wanna make sure that the computer's receiving an RPM signal and, the, and, and that it's firing the injectors. Um, I realize we have spark and on this system that does address the cam and crank, but I just wanna make sure we have injection pulse too and then we'll go back to the pump and check our, our powers and grounds back there. So maybe we could debate this test and whether or not it's necessary in this situation. Um, it'll be useful for someone either way. So I'm just using a uh, little back probing tool and we're just going to do a voltage test first. And what you need to know about Chrysler's is they will not put power to their fuel injectors with just the key on. So you need to crank it over and uh, the computer needs to receive an RPM signal which energizes the relay that powers this circuit. So what we wanna do this test when we're cranking. Um, go ahead and crank that for me, Jason. Okay, I had nine volts on that wire. I'm gonna jump over to the other one. It's a little bit low. This battery is getting weak. Okay, uh, go ahead and crank it. Okay, had like eight and a half volts crank and you saw momentarily it jumped up to 11. So we do have we do have power going to this injector, and again, on this system, that tells us that we have um, we have an RPM signal, and the computer is energizing the relay, the same relay that would be powering the fuel pump. So system design, operation, that's stuff that's also important. Uh, next test I'm going to do is, this is actually an injection pulse test that I can do with this tool. Uh, the reason I am picking it is it is very, very fast. And what we want to look at, uh, this is going to be inverted. Um, maybe a little difficult to see. This, this is my on time of the injector. That's the inductive kick, which would be the spike of the injector. That's my ground control, and that's my injector voltage. I really want to pay attention to those. That'll tell me if this injector is actually firing. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. So I had a 30, 38 millisecond on time. I had a, a 37 volt inductive kick. This injector is firing. The computer is definitely controlling it. My battery's getting weak. I don't know how many more cranks we're going to get. 
I need to go back to the fuel pump now and check my powers and grounds back there. What we do know for sure up here is that cam and crank signals are fine. The computer's receiving the RPM signal it needs to turn the relay on to power up the injectors, power up the coil, and it's the same relay circuit that powers up the fuel pump on this, and uh, or at least the same driver. They call it an ASD relay, which is auto shutdown, and then a fuel pump relay. On Chrysler's, both of those operate together. So basically what I'm saying is our inputs are fine. Go into the back of the truck now. Okay, so before I go back and do our checks, I did put a jump pack on this, and that was based on our voltage readings we had on the last test. And the tool that I'm using here is a Power Probe 4. And uh, the reason I picked this tool for this job is, uh, number one, the under side of this vehicle is completely filled with rust. And when I go back there to check my powers and grounds, finding a good ground back there is going to be next to impossible. So I'm connected directly to the battery and I'm gonna show you guys here when I touch the battery positive, you see I'm reading 1245 and a little red LED, don't know if that's showing up there. There we go. Red LED, that's power. And then the ground would be green and .02. And if you like the little, the little beep. So to each his own. But here's the confidence I have right now is I'm going to the back of the vehicle. I know I have a good power and ground. Some of you guys have mentioned using long jumper wires. That is completely acceptable too. Uh, this is just the tool I'm using for this job. So going to the back. Okay, the first wire I'm checking is this heavy gauge orange and black wire. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to get a better shot of the screen here in a second. Okay, can you crank that for me, Jason? This should be my pump feed wire. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Wow, I only have like six volts on that wire. That is not good. Uh, okay. That is not good at all. See, if, if I was using a regular meter right now and I see, I see six volts on a feed wire like that, my first thought is I have a bad ground on my meter and I'd be moving my ground around. Uh, I am very confident that my ground is fine. Let me just take a look at what this ground voltage looks like before we start chasing a voltage drop problem. Alright, this is the ground wire for the pump, at least it should be. I'm not using a diagram, just going after the heavier gauge wires back here. Alright, go ahead and crank that. Okay, had a little increase there, which is really what I wanted to see. That tells me I have some kind of current flow. I'm gonna recheck that power wire again. We, we have a big time drop here. All right, back on this feed wire again. Uh, before you crank it this time, can you, um, wait a minute. Why don't I have a reading on here at all? Should have something, hold on. Okay, the first time I did this, I don't know if I was making good contact. I, I, I wanna see that green light come on, which is really an indication of a ground, and where that's getting a ground, would be through the brush contacts of the pump right now. Um, and you saw the blank screen, maybe you saw the blank screen, that was telling me no contact. Uh, go ahead and crank it, let's watch this again. Ready? Yep. Okay. That was weird. Um, that was better, the voltage was better, it might have just been my pin. Go ahead and crank it again. Okay, I like a 10 volt. I'm not sure why I had that momentary red light. Uh, oh, okay, the red light's gonna light with battery voltage. Uh, I'm just getting familiar with the tool. One more time, crank it. Uh, okay, gotcha. So there's a, there's a threshold on this tool that makes the red light light. I had about 10 volts on that circuit during cranking, that's enough for this circuit, this pump to be running. Um, I was concerned about wiring initially, but that would have just been my pin contact. 
So another variable there, and this should be something maybe, maybe, that we can beat on this tank and get this pump to run. Uh, let's try it. And uh, uh, Pete, yeah. you said that the gauge um, not working. He knows that, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you try to crank that again? Yeah, one more time. Okay. This pump's not running at all. This thing is dead. One more voltage check just to be sure. And I want to talk about that number for one second, which is showing a ground that may not be finding a ground through the pump. Um, I believe this pump circuit's open. That could be finding a ground through the O2 heater, which is also on this circuit. And right now, this circuit is not alive, so we don't want to use that as an ultimate guide that our contacts are good in the pump. Just. Uh, a variable there. Go ahead and crank it one more time. Okay, good. That is a good feed. And then one more time, I will show you the ground. And we had a slight voltage rise on the ground, which said that uh, there was at least some amount of current. I'm not going to do a current measurement here. I don't need to. Pump powers and grounds is good enough. On a typical fuel pump, what I'll see in this ground test is 0.3 of a volt, 300 millivolts. Uh, go ahead and crank it. Okay, very slight increase, which does say there is some current there, and uh, but this motor's junk, so it needs a fuel pump motor, no question about it. Okay, final uh, thought on this video, guys, is just be careful when you're using uh, the power probe. You guys saw when I initially checked that orange and black wire, I had six volts on that circuit, and a lot of us, when we have a tool like this, we're tempted to you know, we know we can apply power to something, so hey, let's throw 12 volts at it, right? I mean, that's what people do. Well, the problem with that method here was I was not 100% sure that that orange and black wire was my pump feed at that point in time. What if that happened to be the sending unit wire that never receives a direct 12 volt and you just pretty much cooked the sending unit by sending 12 volts to it? So remember that using this tool, uh, it is an awesome tool, but it can really get you in trouble if you're not careful. And in particular, putting power and ground to things, you have no idea what you're doing. In fact, I would say you have no business putting power or ground on a circuit unless you have a wiring diagram in front of you and you know exactly what you're doing. So just a final, final word there on the power probe. Just keep in mind, if you're not going to the battery like I was and you read low voltage underneath the vehicle, most of the time it's because your meter has a bad ground. Uh, the nice thing about using this tool and why I used it in this case is I didn't have to worry about that variable, a bad ground on my meter on a rusty frame here in uh, the Rust Belt of Pennsylvania. So that's it guys, faulty fuel pump on a Jeep. I'll catch you next time.